Phil Perry joining us now covering all things Patriots, a hardworking man driving back from Philly after what we saw last night during the preseason. Phil, uh, thinking about the quarterbacks here, which is the top headline, I guess two quarterbacks is a good problem to have. Is Cam Newton the starter based on what we saw last night? I think it's still TBD, Carolyn. I really do. I think they're still trying to fact find on Mac Jones and figure out how much can they really give this guy and how much can he digest? Because so far, everything they've given him, he's handled. And to me, and I think the Patriots may feel the same way, if these two players are relatively close in terms of how consistent they are day-to-day, week-to-week in these preseason games, sure, but also practice-to-practice, throw-to-throw, and how productive they are, you know, are they executing the plays the way they're designed? Are they maximizing the yardage in a given play? Are they hitting the, the throws downfield if they're there for them to hit? And are they just taking what the defense gets them if everything else is taken away? Are they making the right decisions? All these things are going to factor in. And I wouldn't say just because Cam Newton had a very good night on Thursday night, and he did have a very good night. I wouldn't say that he is locked into that starting job because of that, because Mac Jones played well as well. And to me, they've been pretty even throughout the course of the summer here. There's also an important asterisk that we have to put on both of these performances, which is the Eagles played absolutely no one on the defensive side of the ball. So I'm not even sure how great a gauge it was of either of their abilities based on who they were playing. It's such a great point. I was just going to say, how much does the Eagles defense have to do with all this? Do we need to pump the brakes a little bit? But in reality, I mean, how accurate of an assessment was this of of these two quarterbacks, given what you just said, that you really didn't face a defense that was preventing too, presenting too much of a challenge? So I think Josh McDaniels and Bill Belichick will try to remove the defense from the equation as best as you can do that when they're analyzing the film and, and they're trying to study these players, particularly at that position in a vacuum and they'll say okay first of all what kinds of plays did we run with both quarterbacks because those were distinctly different even in the passing game I thought for a while Carolyn that yes the running game of course would be different when Cam Newton's on the field because he provides that element of mobility that Mac Jones really just does not but the passing game should be relatively similar regardless of which quarterback is in there what we saw last night was A lot of max protection from the Patriots with Cam Newton in the game, meaning extra guys that were in there at the line of scrimmage trying to keep him clean, trying to keep that pocket clean, and only two pass catchers running into the pass pattern. With Mac Jones, it looks like at least that they're a little bit more comfortable spreading it out and allowing him to sit back there with just the five offensive linemen in there to protect. And if there's a free rusher, Well, that's on Mac Jones, and they may be doing that to just see how much he can handle because that requires a fair amount of processing at the line of scrimmage. And again, I thought he handled it pretty well. He was pressured at times last night. He was able to to step up and step away from pressure and still make accurate throws down the field. So the passing game, the running game, they're both going to be different depending on how these quarterbacks, or sorry, which quarterback is in the game. And I think how they execute those specific plays, those plays that are specific to their skill sets, is how Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels are going to try to evaluate this. People are pointing towards Mac Jones' arm strength, variety of throws, game management, that sort of a thing. You've been covering him, following him for a while now since he's been in New England. Did he exceed expectations with his arm in a way that you know people weren't expecting, or is this kind of par for the course with what you're going to get with this guy? I think the narrative pre-draft got a little out of control with Mac Jones. There were these unbelievably physically gifted quarterbacks in this year's draft class. We know Justin Fields, Trey Lance, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson. All of these guys have better physical traits than Mac Jones. Mac Jones also had a a picture circulating the Internet, which everybody saw with his shirt off smoking a cigar. That didn't do him any favors in terms of his abilities as an athlete, or at least what people understood would be his abilities as an athlete at the next level. He's a better athlete than people give him credit for. He's not going to run by anyone anytime soon, but he does have an ability to buy himself time in the pocket. And his arm can be good. And I say it can be good because it is good when he's allowed to have his feet underneath him, the pocket's clean, and he can step into the throw. We saw him rip a couple last night and have some pretty good velocity on it. When his arm talent, I'll call it, instead of arm strength, because I think he does have some arm strength, but when his arm talent or lack thereof does show up is if he ever has to throw off his back foot or if he can't step into a throw, maybe because an offensive lineman has been pushed into his personal space in the pocket, that's when you see the ball maybe flutter a little bit or it doesn't have quite the RPMs that some other quarterbacks would be able to get on the football to get it to the sideline or to get it deep down the middle. So 
he has been better than I thought. He's still not incredibly physically gifted. His gift is really his brain. And we've seen him run the hurry up. We've seen him execute on third and long. We've seen him execute in one back sets and two back sets and two tight end sets and one tight end sets, five wide, two backs in the backfield. They've put everything on him, almost everything that they can within reason in just a couple months in working with him. But they put so much on him, Carolyn, and he seems to have handled it all. And that's really what his his quote unquote superpower is going to be at the NFL if he has one. Just before we let you go, last thing here, do you expect, based on what you just described about different ways that these two quarterbacks can be utilized, do you expect a quarterback change midseason? Is that a possibility here? Are they going to choose one quarterback and try to stick with that plan? Um, you know, what what's the consensus from there in terms of who we could see when? My thinking has been throughout that because – One player is a player that you really have no future with. As much as you may like him, as much as he helped you out last year, Cam Newton was a captain. He took his lumps in a weird season, in a bad situation for him personally, where he came in late, had to try to learn on the fly, and he he sort of did everything with, with a smile on his face. He had a great attitude, and he was a great teammate. They love Cam Newton. As much as you love him, he's not the plan moving forward. So what I have felt is that if these two players are playing at a relatively even level, and I think they're there right now, that they would go with Mac Jones because Mac Jones probably has the greater potential for growth over the course of the season. And so if you feel like he's at a pretty similar level to Cam Newton in terms of his ability to execute right now, why not start him early? And then maybe you have a significantly better quarterback by the end of the season because of all the reps that he'll have under his belt at that point. So I do think that's a possibility. But I could also see Bill Belichick saying, and Mike Lombardi, Bill Belichick's close friend, said this the other day on his podcast, The GM Shuffle. He said, why rush the kid? Because if it doesn't go well for him, are you going to kill his confidence if you end up having to pull him and put in whoever the backup is, whether it's Cam Newton or somebody else? And it's a decent point. And they may know things about Mac Jones and his personality and his ability to handle adversity that we just don't know and we'll never know just from watching practice and from watching these games. I don't think that would be the case with him. I don't think he would wilt. He just played at Alabama. He played for Nick Saban. He won a national championship. A lot of eyes on him at that program. And he dealt with some adversity there. He really had to wait his time before he was able to become the starting quarterback. But if that's how they feel, I could definitely see them going Cam Newton week one. And then whenever Mac Jones is ready, insert the rookie. I think that's the key, Carolyn. I don't even really look at this as a competition between Mac Jones and Cam Newton, I look at this as they're going to study Mac Jones and give him as much as they can and try to make it hard on him. And if they still feel like, after all of the rigmarole of the preseason, they still feel like, wow, he's handled everything and he's ready to go, it almost doesn't matter how well Cam has played because Mac Jones is your guy. He was a first-round pick. And so I think that's the key. It's is Mac ready, not is Mac better than Cam? Seems like there's still a lot to be determined. Phil Perry, I know you got to run NBC Sports Boston. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Carol.